changing jewelry while piercing's healing. We're going to talk about why you may need to do that. What's the best method to do it? Uh, what are the risks involved with doing that? And hey, if you don't want to change it during healing, when can you change it? When should? How long should you wait? Coming up next on Body Piercing Basics, episode number ninety-six. So you should probably stick around. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So, when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you a level of expertise that comes from being in the body piercing industry for well over 27 years. What are we going to talk about today? Uh, basically, this is a really common recurring question that I get in comments here on the channel and basically in, in from clients on a regular basis. When is it safe to change my jewelry? Why should I change it? Should I change it during the healing process, etc.? So we're going to cover some of the basics today to kind of give you an overview of it. The thing is, as a disclaimer, right off the, right from the start, it is always best to wait until the piercing is completely healed. Um, you should never change the jewelry for just because you want to change it while the piercing is healing. And I'll get into the risks that are involved with that a little bit later on here in the video. So let's start this off with uh, when would you need to change the jewelry? There's a number of different reasons why you may need to change the jewelry during the healing process. The first and foremost, and probably the most common, is that you've been pierced with some type of post jewelry, and for one reason or another, uh, when the piercer estimated the size or the amount of swelling you would see, they didn't put a longer post in to allow for that, or a long enough one. So the swelling starts to exceed the length of that particular post. This can cause a lot of issues because what causes trauma usually, or what causes trauma, what causes swelling is usually trauma, and the body will start to begin to see this um, impacting in the fact that it can't swell more as trauma. So it just kind of creates a vicious circle where it won't, the swelling won't go down, it won't start to settle into healing because there's all this abuse being caused by this barbell that's too short that is causing abuse and trauma that's causing swelling. You, you get the idea. So in that case, you should probably put a longer post in. The next thing would be is if the jewelry is in proper style. Um, for example, probably the most common or easy one to talk about this with two primary ones that are pretty common would be a conch piercing that's done initially with a ring. Uh, it, can, it can be healed that way. You can heal piercings out with rings, but it's always going to be much more difficult and more prone to issues. Another one would be nipples. Nipples that are done with either circular jewelry or curved barbells. Both of these tend to cause issues, especially if they're not oversized enough to allow for as straight as possible um, for that piercing to heal. The next reason would be is if your body is reacting to the material that the jewelry is made out of. This can be a situation where it's not uncommon for it to go through its initial um, reaction to the piercing, trauma, etc., and then it settles into its normal healing, and then all of a sudden it flares up and it's red and agitated and it's acting like it's infected, when the reality is that it is an allergic reaction to the metal. Uh, another possibility with this is it will act like the, the, the trauma thing, and five days in, that normal reaction does not start to recede. There's always a possibility that what you're having is a reaction to the material that the jewelry is made out of. Number four, the jewelry's way too long and there's too much movement. This is pretty prone. Uh, tongue piercings are prone to this, where we have to pierce for that massive amount of swelling we can see with tongue piercings, but after it's been in there for a while, just the, the twisting and the movement will actually prolong your healing period and cause possibly additional s swelling and, of course, increases the risk of enamel erosion, gum erosion, and softening of the bones inside your mouth. So going to a shorter barbell is actually going to make the piercing probably heal faster and be less prone to all those risks. So you want to downsize. The other situation was, is where the jewelry is extremely long, and for one reason or another, it is sliding or slipping through the piercing a lot, creating a lot of movement. Also, it's sticking out there and getting caught on stuff all the time. Last one, number five, would be that the jewelry is too heavy. Um, this can cause prolonged healing. This can cause issues. 
uh, bumps, etc., in a healing piercing, just basically because there's just too much weight on that piercing, um, and it's actually abusing the piercing and causing issues. Um, so a lighter piece needs to be put in to uh, eliminate this issue. Now, what are the major risks with changing jewelry during the healing process? The first one, of course, is that the piercing is going to close on you. Um, your body isn't uh, that particularly excited about healing out a piercing in the first place. If you're changing jewelry and you're giving it the option of being open and it has that ability to close, it's going to try to do that um, immediately. Uh, you do need to make sure that if you are changing jewelry that you can get the jewelry back in very quickly. The next risk is that you will have issues getting the jewelry back in. Um, basically, when piercings heal, they heal from the outside inward. So even though they may seem pretty healed, you just have kind of maybe part of that tunnel it has created the uh, tissue has formed and it hasn't connected in the center so when you put the jewelry in, once the jewelry's out of there they can kind of float around on their own and not really line up so you take the jewelry out they kind of go out uh, like a garden hose with the uh, the water turned on high they kind of go and have a mind of their own and you can't get those two holes to line up or those two tunnels to line up and get the jewelry through the last one is is that you cause trauma or damage to the piercing um, if you can't get the jewelry in smoothly and you have to work at it and you have to force it almost through there and almost kind of re-pierce it, there's always a possibility that you're going to dislodge whatever skin growth is already in there or uh, cause so much trauma that, yeah, you put the shorter one in because you're past the swelling, but now you've caused so much trauma that suddenly it starts swelling up again. Next up, let's talk about what is the best methods for changing jewelry. Uh, first and foremost, the best way to do it is to go see your piercer and have them do it professionally. They have the proper tools, they have the proper techniques, uh, what, they have a lot of things more, a lot more experience, and it's going to be easier for them to change the jewelry and with the least amount of trauma that could possibly be caused. So it always it doesn't hurt to let your piercer do it. Next up, uh, the jewelry should be sterile. You should never put jewelry in a uh, healing piercing that hasn't ran through a hospital-grade autoclave um, sterilizer or certified ster medical-grade sterilizer and been sterilized properly. Um, anytime, the, the piercing is still an open wound. Uh, it doesn't matter how much rubbing alcohol you put on it or if you boiled it in water for four hours or bleached it or whatever home concoction that you come up with there's still a very strong possibility that there's going to be contaminants on that jewelry. You then insert it into this fresh piercing or healing piercing. It is an open wound. It can lead to an infection. So always use jewelry that has been sterilized. The other thing I would suggest having on hand is a water-based lubricant. Um, we like Surgilube. That's what I use. You can get away with uh, pretty much anything that's just water-based lubricant with no additives. Like, for example... If you're using KY, make sure it's not the kind that has warming effect or any flavors or moisturizers or any other stuff. Well, I guess there'd be moisturizers. No, no, there wouldn't technically be. But anything extra, just good old-fashioned water-based. Do not use petroleum. Petroleum can cause a lot of issues uh, mainly because it can leave this film behind that's very difficult to remove from the piercing area. Uh, this can collect uh, contaminants and cause uh, an infection or other problem later on down the road. So always use water base when available. Now, it's best to insert them using a uh, taper pin or guide pin. Um, the threaded taper pins are your best option or guide pins. You just thread it onto the end of whatever you're putting in. So what you do is you take that taper pin, you, you loosen up the jewelry, you take off, like, let's say we're changing a barbell. First off, you take off one end. Then you take the taper pin, you push it against that uh, barbell and hook the, jewel, the new jewelry on the other side. Then you just use that whole thing, kind of like a train, to push the jewelry out and then reinsert uh, the new jewelry. Uh, that way, there's always something in the piercing. You don't have to worry about trying to line the holes up later. It just makes it a great deal easier. And it's worth the investment, um, if you're trying to do this at home, to purchase one of those guide pins or taper pins. Now, let's talk about when is the best time to change the jewelry. Generally, what I say is, if you're going to do it at home and you're going to do it on a regular basis, you need to double up the healing period. Meaning, if it takes... 12 weeks to heal the piercing, then you should wait 24 weeks before you change it at home. 
Uh, Pearson kind of goes through uh, a number of different stages, but the main ones we always focus on is the healing period. And that's a period of time it takes your body to grow that tissue around the jewelry and become, you know, gets to the point where it's no longer an open wound. That tissue is very thin, very fragile, and prone to tears, rips, etc. be dislodged. After that, your body starts producing additional tissue um, to get it to the point where it's closer to normal tissue. Thus, it'll be more durable, more flexible. Also, the piercing will kind of grow away from the, the jewelry. Um, it'll be more loose-fitting, and the jewelry it will easily slide through the piercing. Then, it's going to be a lot easier to change the jewelry, not only because there's going to be kind of a slightly bigger hole, but you don't have to worry as much about dislodging uh, the, the piercing tunnel or causing trauma to it, and suddenly your healed piercing is back to square one again. Now, the only time I would really suggest immediately changing the jewelry right after it heals is if you have longer barbells or labre studs or some type of post jewelry. And the reason for that is, is often leaving the longer jewelry in is going to increase the likelihood of contact with the jewelry and the piercing. So, for example, if you have a nipple piercing and they had to pierce it with, uh, let's say, a 5 eighths because your nipple's about a half inch wide, maybe a little more, but now that it's gone through the healing process, there's like a full quarter inch or so of loose, loose barbell there. Having that longer barbell in there is going to just increase the likelihood of it catching on everything it comes in contact with. Plus, the constant sliding back and forth could cause issues too. Um, in, in that case, I would generally suggest go see your piercer, have them do it. Usually, if you buy the jewelry from them, uh, they'll change it for free. I know with me, I will change it for free regardless of where the jewelry comes from. Or they will charge you a minimal fee to, to do it. Um, personally, I don't understand why people do that, but eh, I, I don't run their business. They do their business the way they do their business. However, um, paying that little extra money is going to be worth the peace of mind and making sure that you don't damage the piercing and it goes smoothly. Well, that's all I have to say about when's the right time to change jewelry and et cetera and changing jewelry during the healing process and kind of some hints and et cetera. If you found this interesting, edifying, or useful, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. I like it when you like it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post a video. Also, if you like merch, you like uh, body art oriented type t-shirt type stuff, Check out our merch store. Lots of very silver designs there and very silver colors and types. Link is in the description. If I brought up a question or you have something to add to this, maybe some techniques that you've used to change jewelry, please leave a comment. Um, I generally answer them when I have time. Um, and I'm always impressed by some of the information that people share on here. So help out your fellow piercing fan and post your information. Till next time, you're soaping all your piercing skill with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Take care, and we will see you in the next video.